Uh, this is the moderator. I just promoted Dr. Glover up. Oh, and it looks like he's unmuting, so we sh should be good there. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Dr. Glover. So we can hear you, but we can't see you. Is that correct? You don't have video? I do have video technology here. I apologize. I thought I was um, visible. Let me see here. I thought I had all its video settings. There we go. Can you see me? No. Uh, this is the moderator, Dr. Glover. Um, there should be a start video button that's kind of next to your uh, microphone button. If you click that, that should turn on your uh, camera. There we go. Okay, here we go. So, hey, all right, there we are. Excellent. Thank you. Of course. Sorry about that. No, that's fine. All right, is everyone ready? Yes. All right, we are on the record. It is August 19th, 2022, in the matter of the petition for early termination of probation by Robert Glover Jr. This matter is being heard before the Board of Chiropractic Examiners, Department of Consumer Affairs, State of California. This is OAH case number 2022. 070529, board case number 2010-800. We do have a quorum of the board present. They've already identified themselves for the record. My name is Marcy Larson. I'm an administrative law judge with the Office of Administrative Hearings presiding over this matter with the board. Dr. Glover, we were supposed to have a court reporter transcribing this hearing. We did not have one available. This hearing is being audio recorded. Do you consent to audio recording? Yes, I do. All right, then we will proceed with, then with audio recording. All right, uh, Dr. Glover, I just wanna give you an, a brief overview of how the hearing will proceed uh, this afternoon. We are here today because you have filed a petition for early uh, termination of your probation. The board is concerned about rehabilitation that you've undergone since the termination or since you, your license was placed on probation. Um, they have the benefit of your petition package. Um, so um, you won't need to repeat anything in that petition package. I will have Ms. Lou announce herself to the record and then I'll explain to you what Ms. Lou, Lou's role will be uh, this afternoon. Okay. Good afternoon, I'm Mabel Lou, Deputy Attorney General. All right. And Dr. Glover, you're, rep you're representing yourself this afternoon, is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor, yes. And you understood that you could have had an attorney represent you at your own expense? Yes. All right, and you're proceeding on your own behalf, correct? Yes, yes ma'am, yes. All right, so Ms. Liu, who represents the people in this matter, will present um, the petition package and give the board a brief overview, as I mentioned, of the history of discipline of your license and the, uh, your compliance with probation. Um, you have the burden of proving to the board that your term, uh, probation should in fact be terminated early. Um, and so after Ms. Liu um, provides the overview for the, for the board, she will also identify the petition documents. I will mark those. Um, and if you have no object objection to those documents, they will be admitted into evidence. I will then swear you in. You can provide the board any testimony that you want them to consider for purposes of issuing a decision uh, in this matter. After you've testified, uh, Ms. Liu will have an opportunity to question you. You may object to any question that she asks of you, but you must have a legal basis not to answer a question. If you have an objection to a question, just please tell me, and then I'll make a decision on whether or not you will be required to answer the question. After okay. Ms. Liu is done questioning you, I will ask each of the board members if they have any questions for you as well. And then I will ask you uh, one final time if you have anything you would like to add to your testimony. Uh, Ms. Liu uh, and, and yourself, Dr. Glover, will have an opportunity to give closing remarks if you wish. You will not receive a decision today from the board. The board will go into closed session uh, this afternoon, uh, and then you will receive a written decision sometime in the future. During this proceeding, I cannot give any legal advice. But if you have any questions about the procedures, please let me know. And if I can answer the question, I will. All right, any questions before we get started? 
No, I'm good to go, Your Honor. All right, then, Ms. Blue. Thank you. With regard to petitioner's license information, on March 26, 2001, the board issued a, uh, to the petitioner a doctor of chiropractic license number DC27573. The license expires May 31st, 2023, unless renewed. This license is currently on probation with an estimated completion date of May 25th, 2025, pursuant to the terms and conditions of probation identified in the decision and order in case number AC2010-808. The discipline taken against the petitioner's license is that effective January 29th, 2001, the board issued a decision in case number 2001-213, ordering that a license be issued to the petitioner upon passage of the licensure exam with the license immediately revoked, the order of revocation stayed, and the license placed on probation for three years with specific terms and conditions. Petitioner was subsequently issued license number DC27573 on March 26, 2001, and his three-year probationary period began on that date. The petitioner successfully completed probation on March 25, 2004. Uh, on January 20, 2011, a first amended accusation was filed against the petitioner alleging multiple causes for discipline for unprofessional conduct uh, in that he was alleged to have committed sexual misconduct and gross negligence relating to his treatment of patient GM and was twice convicted of driving under the influence that subjected his license to discipline. After an administrative hearing, the board found he engaged in sexual misconduct and gross negligence and dismissed the driving under the influence convictions as causes for discipline because one conviction was overturned on appeal and the remaining driving under the influence conviction was not established as substantially related to the qualifications, functions, or duties of a chiropractor. As a result, effective March 7, 2012, petitioner's license was revoked pursuant to the board's decision and order. And on October 14, 2016, the petitioner appeared before the board on a petition for reinstatement of his revoked license. On January 12, 2017, the board denied his petition for reinstatement on the grounds that although the board found the petitioner made positive steps toward rehabilitation, he still denied he engaged in any wrongful sexual misconduct. On May 21st, 2019, the petitioner appeared before the board again on a petition for reinstatement of his revoked license. So there were, uh, there was a, a previous petitions filed. Uh, he had filed two petitions for reinstatement of the revoked license. Effective October 16th, 2019, the board granted petitioner's petition for reinstatement of license the license was restored, then immediately revoked. Uh, the order of revocation was stayed and petitioner was placed on five years probation with specific terms and conditions. Some of the conditions of probation were uh, that he uh, have a practice monitor for 75% of his work week. A third party must be present while examining and or treating female patients. A pre-approved alcohol abuse support group facilitator provide quarterly reports to the board confirming his attendance and without concerns uh, that he reimbursed the board costs. The remaining balance to date is $770. The daily check-in with the board's testing program administrator to inquire if he must provide a random test that same day uh, was another condition of probation and abstaining from alcohol use. We are here today because the petitioner has filed a petition seeking to terminate his probation early. His petition package contains the following. A petition for early termination of probation dated May 3rd, 2022. The petitioner's statement um, and additional support documentation uh, with regard to sanctions removed from um, uh, his uh, medical cases, Medi-Cal, uh, his, certif his certification as a CME medical examiner with the Department of Transportation. Um, he has a petition for reinstatement uh, 
answers to the questions that he had answered yes to. His uh, patient's thank you note uh, from March 9th, 2022, a petition for reinstatement uh, with elaborate answers to the yes questions in section four of his petition, uh, letters of recommendations from patients and coworkers, uh, OIG medical Medicare reinstatement as provider of services and letters from uh, Medicare and workers comp, uh, certificates of completion, uh, a document showing he was a volunteer for the Census Bureau, an inspirational book uh, by the uh, petitioner, the certificate of completion seminars attended, volunteer activities, certificates of appreciation, um, a book on ethical perspectives, sexual boundary issues, and the chiropractic paradigm, a book on professional boundaries, a book on ethics and practice, um, another more certificates of completion, uh, disaster relief of California name tag from the California Southern Baptist Convention, his um, probation monitor uh, C. Bell with regard to his status of probation showing he is compliant uh, still owes a balance of $770 cost to the board. The board's recent decision and order of October 16, 2019 and case number 2018-808, the board's decision on the petition for reinstatement where reinstatement was denied effective January 12, 2017, and the board's decision to revoke his license effective March 7, 2012. Right. Any objection, Dr. Glover, to any of those documents? Uh, no, no objection. Actually, I'm glad you mentioned that. I, I plan on putting everything in perspective here. No objection. All right. So, petition package is marked as Exhibit 1. It is admitted. Ms. Liu, anything further? Nothing further, Your Honor, because the burden is on the petitioner. I have no further statements, but we reserve the right to question him. All right, Dr. Glover, the first thing I need to do is swear you in. If you would please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm under penalty of perjury that the testimony you give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state and spell your name. My name is Robert H. Glover, Jr. I'm Robert, R-O-B-E-R-T, H, Glover, G-L-O-V-E-R, Jr. All right, so Dr. Glover, as I explained before, this is your opportunity to address the board through your testimony, to provide them any information that you want them to consider for purposes of issuing the decision regarding your petition. You may begin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, first of all, um, I wanna thank everyone who's present. Um, the, the board members, um, your honor, and uh, Madam Attorney General, I thank you for this opportunity for me to be heard and to petition. I'm grateful for that. Um, my goal is to, I, I hope, my hope is that you can get a much clearer picture of who I am and what I have learned from this matter and what I've done to rehabilitate and most of all, the state of course. And I want you to know too, I was sorry for how I treated my patient back in 2007, um, how I acted and treated. I've learned a lot of good life lessons during these past 15 years. The big problem really is I have been abusing alcohol. Absent of my alcoholism, and, and let me be crystal clear, please, this would never ever have happened. I care about people, I care about community. I live to help, not hinder or hurt people. I'm a public servant, and you'll learn more about that. You know, what I did back then was stupid of me, immature, and selfish, and I was drinking to treat my depression, my pain, my frustration. I, I forgot about my professionalism. Um, I could go on and on, but that was wrong because I allowed that to interfere with my ability to practice. I've had all this time and a lot of training, which you're going to be exposed to, and, and I understand the protective actions of 
a governing body. I totally get that. I'm totally in, in agreement with protecting our public. Um, that being said, I want you to know that today I am much healthier professionally and I'm a better person. I am grateful to the almighty. The, the thing I want you to understand board members, your honor and attorney general is that what resonates with me the most is the fact I, I dropped the ball. I mean, here it, it was, I was granted a license. This is a privilege, a license to treat and care about people through what I created, my holistic health care services, using my mind, my hands, and my heart. I, I love helping people. I love inspiring people. And being a chiropractor is awesome because we know we get to use our hands, our mind, and our heart. This is part of my gift set, my calling. I'm sure about that. And so are a lot of people out there in the world. I had built, open, and developed a lovely holistic health practice a healing energy center. And once again, I got the opportunity to treat a variety of people of all sorts. It was like Rainbow Coalition. But once again, unfortunately, because of my bad habits, my hurts and my hangups, um, I, I dropped the ball. I let stupid alcohol get the best of me. But that problem is long gone. I have been sober from alcohol, just FYI since December 28, 2015. And I have done a lot of extensive rehabilitation. In retro, I really realized that I failed, even though I love being a chiropractor, I realized I failed to set up some safeguards in my practice to protect my practice, my patients, and most importantly, to stay mentally and professionally fit and healthy. Once again, I let alcohol get the best of me and it interfered with my ability to practice as a chiropractor. That was not, not cool, not, not at all. I did end up paying a huge price in losing my license, in losing my patients that I cared about, and having to close my practice. You know, board members, your honor, attorney general, this was my baby. I, I lost my baby. I mean, losing that just really, it, it impacted me. I paid a huge price in dealing with that hurt, that depression, and its domino effects, let alone when I reflected on how I impacted another human being who happened to be my patient that I tried to help over many years. I don't take that stuff lightly. I will tell you, please know, I am very grateful that I reflected on my behavior back in 2007. I examined myself and I took massive action to address my problem, my alcoholism due to my anxiety, my depression, my frustration. As was noted in the May 21st, 2019 hearing, I presented much substantial and convincing evidence, thank God, of my rehabilitation and my license was restored. And I am so grateful for that. And even though you have my package, I do want you to to know a few things about this restoration that are so important. Um, I eventually hired a professional psychologist, a doctor to help me to deal with my alcoholism, my depression, and his name was Dr. Bridgman, an expert in that field. And he, we undertook personal counseling for about many years, about 10 years to be exact. And he wrote a letter back in, I think it was April 17, 2019, and he stated, one, he didn't find any evidence whatsoever of any sexual deviancies or disorders. Um, he didn't find me to be a threat of any kind to anyone in any type of danger to myself or anyone else. And he also confirmed my dedication um, and sincerity to therapy. I, I took a very diversified approach, which I want you to know about, because I wanted to seek the fullness of this problem, this problem that I had part my hand in. Um, I am responsible, and I took full responsibility. Dr. Bridgman also noted my sobriety and my stability, because he noticed as time went on, he, f he saw me fall in love. I met a beautiful woman my wife, two years after this incident in 2007, and we've been married 10 plus years. 
And my wife is a gift from God. That is my queen. And I'll tell you right now, I love my wife. I love my family. My wife is not going to have me dealing with alcoholic behavior. That's one thing. But I have accountability to God. I have accountability to you, to chiropractic. I also attended, as part of my recovery, I attended over 150 AA meetings, Celebrate Recovery, Smart Recovery. Smart Recovery deals with the cognitive behavioral approach. Good stuff, by the way. I did a 30-day residential rehabilitation program, and I completed an 18-month DUI program, and I attended MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving Victim Impact Panels. I also, you know, provided you with a lot of college transcripts and certificates. I want to highlight the three-day course I took with Professional Boundaries Incorporated. This is specifically designed for healthcare professionals, medical doctors, um, chiropractors, nurse practitioners, um, psychiatrists, psychologists, and it deals with boundaries. And this was, I took the extended edition this was held at UCI Medical School, by the way. I also earned an AS degree and a vocational certificate in alcohol and other drug studies from Saddleback College. They, they are one of the premier educators in the field of addictions, alcohol, and drug studies. And I also obtained a certification as a smart recovery facilitator. So essentially, I engage in a variety of different approaches to address my alcohol abuse. Once again, let me be clear, board members, your honor and attorney general, absent of this drinking problem, we will not be here today. I also completed a master's level seminary program. I earned a master's degree, an MDiv from Rockbridge Seminary. And as a part of my program, I took elective classes in recovery and counseling. Today, I'm a church counselor. I'm gonna come back to that. And lastly, um, when I testified, I, I was able to testify about my desire to the profession that allows me to treat and care for people, for patients. And I acknowledge my sexual misconduct. And I attributed my poor judgment, my behavior due to my alcoholism. Absent of that, let me be clear, this would not have happened, but I did take full responsibility. So that being said, let me share with you what I've been doing since I, my license has been restored, and I'm so grateful. I did get the sanctions removed from both the OIG, Office of Inspector General, and Medicare. That's a governing body. I also got sanctions removed from Medi-Cal. Now, in order to do that, I had to pass a background check, get fingerprinted with the Department of Justice, FBI, because I'm dealing with the public. I also enrolled and became certified as a Medicare provider. They know everything about my background, just like you do, or the chiropractic. I also got registered and certified as a medical examiner with the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. This is a division of the U.S. Department of Transportation. And I also became registered with the Department of Labor, dealing with office workers, office workers compensation program. The takeaway, these are governing bodies. I also completed four CEUs in what's called crisis response care. This is a part of my ministry pandemic training. I am a lay pastor, by the way. I obtained one CPE unit, and CPE stands for clinical pastoral edu education. This is for folk who want to become chaplains in hospitals and whatnot. One CPE unit is equivalent to 400 hours, 100 which is supervised with healthcare workers, chaplains in a hospital setting, and 300 are earned out in the field. Chaplains work for the Veterans Healthcare Administration. I'm a vet, by the way. Um, you can work in hospitals, skilled nursing facilities, um, places like hospice. And hospice has a very special place in my heart because during these last 15 years, I had to put both of my parents, my father who's buried with honors in Arlington in hospice, and my sweet mom and I miss her dearly in hospice. She was away and I had to put her in hospice away, but she's with the Lord now and I'm grateful, but it was tough. And I did not relapse during that time. Um, I also 
obtain a California state certification as a substance use disorder counselor. And this is with the California Association of DUI Treatment Programs. This, this education and training was great because it's allowed me to have a greater, deeper understanding of alcoholism, addiction, behavioral addictions. And, and please know everyone, I've been certified as a substance use counselor for two and a half years. And just like the Board of Chiropractic, we also, with your SUD certification issued by the state of California, you have to maintain 40 CE hours every two years. I've included in my package the 24 courses I've taken, and they have similar courses in ethics and boundaries. The training in drug and alcohol addictions and counselor training, um, and I also did a 32-week tr counselor training through my church, it actually has opened up my mind big time on the importance of recognizing boundaries, the issues people carry. We touched about it in our chiropractic training. This has been amplified big time because we're dealing with hurt people holistically, mind, body, spirit. So I'm thankful to have greater awareness. Um, bear with me here. Um, I also, as part of my conditions of probation, I was ordered to take that very expensive test, that ethics boundary assessment with the EBAS. That's a five hour written out essay test where they're asking me questions and to write out my thoughts on boundaries to make sure I'm kind of getting it. I was also ordered to take the California chiropractic law exam, which I passed. I passed the EBAS test. And I was also ordered to take an additional ethics course. And I was ordered everyone to complete and take a psychological, to get a psychological evaluation. And Dr. Um, Wilson, who's an expert in this field, he also, with Dr. Bridgman, he opined, he found that I'm of no threat to anyone. I'm totally professionally fit to practice, and I'm a threat to no one. And that was his opinion there. Back in July 2020, I actually worked for the federal government as an enumerator um, for the U.S. 2020 Census. I was not a volunteer. I was a federal employee, meaning I had to take another background examination, get fingerprinted, go through the Department of Justice, the FBI, because I'm dealing with the, the public. This was during the COVID, July 2020. I also, and I'm proud to say, I worked part-time back in July 2020. This was when I was trolling my probation. I received my license, but I yet was not able to get back into the field. But during that time as I was trolling, I worked with LabCorp as a corporate wellness representative doing COVID-19 PCR tests. And keep in mind, this is when everything was not well understood. A lot of craziness was going on, a lot of depression. And to be just quite clear, I was honored that I was able to contribute because being a licensed chiropractor, I did try to sign up for the state of California healthcare task force, the VA and say, hey, here I am. I want to help out. They were looking more for medical doctors, not hands on. So this is my way and some type of way of contributing, dealing with a lot of employees who were coming down with COVID in large corporations. The bottom line, everyone, I have um, an extensive um, understanding and uh, experience of drug and alcohol, the problem that caused me to drop the ball. And because of my education and experience in addiction recovery fields and working, I actually worked in treatment facilities for three years. I worked as a support worker, a group facilitator. I was doing the facilitating, by the way, a case manager. I also was a DUI instructor. Those people had no idea I was a chiropractor, the students. They got a lot of good information. It was fun teaching, by the way. I also was a counselor. And when I did get employment as a chiropractor, I had the opportunity, everyone, to work in recoveries because the doctor I was working with, he had agreements in recovery centers, and he loved my background. He said, you are perfect to go into these centers and help uh, people through recovery to lower the pressure through your skill set. Keep in mind, bear with me, please. I also um, wrote a book 
during the pandemic on identity, self-image, and alcoholism. And I got that book published. I also did some more study in what's called making contact. That's training for COVID-19 contact tracers. I earned two more CEUs from PBI, Professional Boundary Incorporated, doing medical chaperone training. And I also earned some more CEUs in, from PBI in managing clinician patient conflicts. And as you know, in my package, I provided copies of all of my chiropractic certificates that I took and through the, um, to maintain my CEUs for my alcohol drug certification. I provided recommendation letters for my um, mentors, my monitors, Dr. Newton and Dr. Pena. These are my bosses that I work for in their practices. I supplied, uh, supplied you a letter from my um, alcohol support facilitator who works at the VA. Um, she had her opinion there. And I provided a couple of letters from a couple of patients, uh, Mrs. Diana C and Mrs. Hima T. Um, they basically commented on my character, on me being professional, competent and caring, and they all hoped and wished that I'm able to get off probation early. That being said, board, at the beginning, I kind of alluded to the fact that I, I get and understand the importance of you, the board. I appreciate the work that you do. I understand the importance of protecting society. Um, I believe I have provided ample evidence to show you that I'm rehabilitated. I've required a much greater and deeper understanding, awareness of boundaries, my role and responsibilities as a healthcare provider. I understand the importance of the board to protect the public. We need that, I'm in agreement. I too care about the safety of the public. If I were to put myself in your shoes, I too would wanna to see substantial and exceptional evidence to vet any DC who wants early termination and if this is going to be for the greater good of society. Here's the thing, everyone. I, I no longer drink. I, I love my wife. I love my family. I'm building a legacy just like you are. I'm a dad. I raised my son with custody going through chiropractic college when I was single. I'm a granddaddy. And I love taking care of people. I care about people. There's no doubt about that. I'm a servant of God. I'm accountable to him. I'm accountable to you. I realize I no longer drink. And all of this has made me a much better person, a better doctor. I'm more educated. I'm more experienced. I'm more equipped. I'm more empowered. I'm, I'm more qualified. I'm also older and wiser. And I've learned a lot from this this arduous experience I went through. I've been meeting all of my conditions of probation as attested by my enforcement um, analyst, Mrs. Bell there, Ms. Bell. Both Dr. Bridgman and both Dr. Wilson, experts in their field, they both stated that I'm fit and safe to practice chiropractic health care and I present no threat whatsoever to the public. My being on probation is positive. It helps us all to move forward. Patients, you see patients, they have bias. They're, they're shocked when they see this older guy and, I, and they don't know me. And I have to inform them of my probation status. That, that's a curveball. And being who I am, it presents a greater standing. This, this society is laced with bias and it creates more confusion, more frustration. Patients are already seeking complementary medical, alternative medical care, CAM care. And we all know as consumers, you know, can you trust this provider? Are they good? Is this going to help me with my problem? We've had our own struggle. But all I'm saying is being on probation with all of this training with who I am today, the problem that happened 15 years ago, that's long gone. I am a much better man now. It also puts my boss's offices, they are business owners at risk because sometimes people are turned off. They're afraid now, they've been scared and they don't have to be. There's no need for me to be checking in daily to go get tested. I don't drink stinking alcohol anymore. 
but I have done a very good job to show up for any time I'm required to get tested. Even during this burdensome COVID-19, these testing facilities, they're not easy to get into. They're loaded, they have fewer employees, people don't wanna work there. They not only do alcohol and drug testing, but they do emergency care. It's a, it's a burden on time and money, but here's the thing. If I had to do that with the board because it's required, do what I need to do what the board tells me to do. I get that. I'm just saying it's not necessary anymore. It's not necessary for me to go to support groups. I ran support groups at the recovery centers, a facilitator teaching DUI over a six, eight month period. Once again, board, I, I think I've acquired a much greater understanding and, I, and I'm grateful that I have improved myself that I reflected. I hope, as I said at the beginning, that you get a clear picture as to who I am. I have primed myself, I have structured my professional career and surrounded myself with good support systems. I did not have this in place when I was being a solo practitioner, stressing myself out, not being efficient in my practice, being frustrated, experiencing no growth. I came out the gate the wrong way. I wish I would have been in a group practice, which I'm in now. I have accountability. As a church counselor, I had to do 32 weeks of training, get, had to get, go through a background check because my church, as with any good church in the community, is not going to just let anybody represent them. We have a reputation. We're dealing with the public. I'm also a teacher at my church. Praise God. I'm responsible and accountable. And also, I'm responsible through my motel church ministry, which I've been doing 10 years faithfully, feeding people, taking care of people. I've learned, I've got to know families in these little motels or families live in one room apartments over the 10 years. I've gotten to know the owners, the employers. What we're doing is bringing peace into the community. Oh, and by the way, too, I, I wanted to mention I've done a lot of volunteer work. I'm not going to sit here and, and take the time going over my volunteer history. I've done a lot of stuff over the last 30, year, 30 years. It's been vetted. This is who I am. I do want to mention when COVID hit, I actually joined the food distribution team at my church. We took the lead in Orange County. We fed over thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. I sat there and watched cars lining up with thousands of people in the cars, thousands of cars, 1,200. I was on the evangelism prayer team. That was my duty. The last point of connection after the people got their care boxes, 1,200 cars, 1,500 cars, different neighborhoods. Hey, how you doing there, sir? How you doing, ma'am? I'm Pastor Rob. How are things going? And people are just, we're connecting different people groups. But I was the last point of contact. What an honor, because we're all human going through this experience. People are dealing with kids on the street, doing drugs, family members sick, dying of cancer, COVID. Some people didn't know the Lord. We talk about that, maybe do a little prayer request. All I'm saying is that was an honor and I'm grateful because this is right when COVID hit. I'm a disaster relief volunteer. So that little badge you saw there, I'm certified through the Southern Baptist. I'm not Southern Baptist. I'm certified through my ch church as a, disaster relief chaplain. I've been to Haiti, I've been to Katrina. I go to places within our country to help out when disasters hit. I did the community emergency preparedness training. And my big takeaway, everyone, when we were working with the firefighters that had to fight those fires in Paris, when their houses were burning, the stress they were dealing with, I was like, wow. Or the police officers, they have to deal with the looters, the protest people, you know, like in Katrina, I was at Katrina, while their houses may be looted. You have to stay focused. So, Dr. Glover, Dr. Glover, so it's, it's almost 2.45, you, you are allocated an hour, and I wanna make sure that Ms. Lou has an opportunity to question you and that the board members have to question you. Okay, so, I understand, I'm, thank okay. you, Your Honor. I'm right at the end of, of my rope here, Your Honor, with, um, okay. with my clothes here. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. The bottom line is, I, I hope you get a clear picture here. I love my family, I care about people. I, I want to stay healthy 
and be here for them. I want to stay healthy and professionally fit for my practice. I, I teach injury prevention at large companies, a two to four hour training. I'm a much different person today and I've learned a lot and I hope board with all my information, the time we've taken that you see that too. So I respectfully board members, your honor, attorney general, that you decide to allow me, grant me the privilege of terminating my probation. And with that being said, thank you for hearing me. Ms. Lou, any questions for Dr. Glover? Just one, Your Honor. First of all, thank you for your service. Um, and so what kind of boundaries exercises do you do? You mentioned it in your uh, your personal statement that's part of your petition package. That's a good question. Well, one, um, it's very important when I'm dealing with a patient that I'm very aware of my physical presence, um, position, you know, respecting, especially if it's a female patient, we have a third party presence. But I need to be aware of the boundaries as I get information from that patient, where they're coming from, because a lot of people have a lot of hurt. So boundaries, definitely, you have to be real clear when it comes to female relationships. So I always, we always have a third party presence. Personally, you have to watch the things you say, because we're in a very hypersensitive society. And we don't want to say things or move our bodies in certain ways that can trigger um, fear or hurt or harm. So the boundaries, you know, with the informed consent, I'm a professional. I'm here to help you to be your chiropractor. Thank you. Nothing further, Your Honor. I'm going to ask our board members, starting with our chair, Dr. Paris, do you have any questions for Dr. Uh, Lover? Also, too, I do want to say, if you don't, pardon me, Your Honor, and, and it's very important, too, and this is a given. I already know this, but I want you to know this. Whenever you're getting ready to do a, a procedure, you always need to explain what you're going to do. So if you're getting ready to touch the shoulders, the neck, it's always wise and smart to explain what you're about to do so that your patient has more clarity. So there is no confusion. That just helps to, with professionalism, it helps the treatment to go much smoother. Right. Uh, Dr. Paris, any questions for Dr. Glover? Uh, hi, Dr. Glover. Um, thank you for coming before us today and uh, congratulations on your reinstatement of your license and your adherence to the probationary terms to date. Um, I, ha I have a couple questions. Um, one, I was, when I was going through the CE packet, I see uh, a CE for less with a license number 9672. Yes. Um, is that uh, a license that you currently hold? That's the certification for my substance use uh, disorder certification. So those CEUs are separate. And I, I, I highlighted that in my package. I have all of my CEUs for chiropractic, which are separate, and the CEUs for the sub certification. So those do not overlap. Those are just um, dual. You're, you're doing one for uh, one license, and then you're doing CEUs separately for? Correct. Correct. We need 40 CEUs for the sub certification as well as our 24 per year with the uh, chiropractic license. Uh, thank you. And I'm also wondering, are you still attending? And I, I think you may have mentioned that you're not, but I wanted to clarify, are you still attending um, MAD or AA or any of those types of meetings? No, I no longer go to those type of support meetings. Um, I, I don't have a need to do so, but what's really awesome is with the support <laughs> meetings through my um, support facilitator at the VA, those are, those are okay. It's like I've done so many, it's, I'm recovered. It's, it's, if I ever felt a need to have to go and talk, talk therapy, Dr. Bridgman is always there. And I know exactly where to go. By the way, I meet with supervisors at my church. We have a very structured, organized counseling program. And I have to meet weekly with my supervisors. We do ground um, table talk meetings here. But no, I don't, I don't attend the meetings any, anymore. Um, my favorite was Celebrate Recovery, by the way. That's at the church. And Smart Recovery is also a really good recovery group because it's not a theistic type group. It's more of a cognitive behavioral type therapy group. 
my, my wife and I, we do a lot of ministry together. So I hope that answers your question there, Dr. Yeah, that does. Thank you very much. I have no further questions. Okay. Dr. Dr. Adams, any questions? Yes. Again, con uh, congratulations on uh, your reinstatement a few years back and your following through on that uh, uh, requirements for your probation. Um, Thank you. As you are aware, uh, it says in your packet that you completed uh, the eight-step program and then also the 12-step program. Is that correct? Yes. And so as you're aware that uh, step eight is making amends, I'm wondering if you um, have reached out to or attempted to reach out to um, the victim of your sexual misconduct for making amends. Uh, good question, Doctor. It's only good to make amends when it's safe to do so. And to answer your question, I did not attempt to make amends um, with that patient because I didn't think it would be safe to do so. I will say, sir, um, during that whole investigation process, when I had a, a phone call um, through the um, Irvine Police Department, the patient actually heard a lot of my concern for her well-being. Um, and I could even hear in her voice, she was kind of taken aback because um, all of my patients know that I care about them. I just messed up because of my dumb alcoholism. But to answer your question, it would not be wise to do so. I think I would be doing more harm than good. But when you can make amends, absolutely. That's always healthy to do. Absolutely. Thank you. I have no other questions. All right. Mr. Sweet, any questions for Dr. Glover? Yes, just one question. Um, Dr. Glover, you mentioned as uh, you were speaking about wanting to have a third party present for some of your examinations, particularly for a female patient. Is that something that you plan on continuing if uh, your probation is terminated? Absolutely. Yes, sir. And do you have someone in place for that already? Oh, yes. Yes. Um, Yes, our, our practice is open, very visible, but we do have third party presence, chaperones. Absolutely. It's very smart and wise. Okay, thank you. Yes. All right, Ms. Cruz, any questions? No questions. And Dr. Daniel. Uh, no questions. They've been asked already. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, Ms. Blue, any closing remarks? Uh, just back to the board, making sure no further questions from our board members. No, and closing remarks, Mr. Ms. Blue, do you have any closing remarks? I'm going to let you speak last, Mr. Mr. Uh, Dr. Glover. Ms. Submit Blue, closing, all right, submitted by Ms. Blue. Uh, closing remarks, Dr. Glover. Um, board members, um, Your Honor and Attorney General, I actually don't owe anything um, to the board now. Actually, the board owes me. I, I overpaid that 770. I actually overpaid 130 dollars. That was my um, payment. You probably just not, did not get that updated. But I just wanted to bring that into the record. So it's free and clear. I paid what I owe. Thank you. Anything else in closing, Dr. Glover? Uh, no, I don't want to reiterate, but thank you so much for your time. And I appreciate your time and keep up the good work. And um, I wish you much peace and purpose in, in moving forward. Right. Is the matter submitted for the board's consideration? Yes. Dr. Glover, matter submitted? Yes. The right, matter is submitted and the record is closed. Uh, uh, we're off the record as to Dr. Glover's petition. Thank you, Dr. Glover. You are free to go. Thank you. Take care. All right, Dr. Paris, do you wish to take a break before our next one, or do you want to just go right into that? Let me let me inquire with the board members. Anyone need a quick break? Two minutes again. We'll we'll take we'll take just two minutes. Uh, two minutes might be tough for everybody to come back. <laughs> we'll do five. It, it's two fifty three, so we do have a little wiggle room in there. Okay, let's go. Let's come back at three o'clock. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> And Judge Larson, we have all the board members present. All right, and I'm just waiting to see Ms. Liu. And is Dr. Mahoney with us also? Let's 
Dr. Mahoney. This is the moderator. I see uh, Dr. Mahoney is online um, and unmuted, but I'm not hearing any audio or seeing any video. Um, Dr. Mahoney, can, um, you... can you see me now? Or... Oh, I hear you. Hello. I don't see you quite yet. I'm WebEx might need to take a moment. <laughs> okay. Oh, there we go. There we okay, go. great. All right, Dr. Mahoney, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right, then. We are on the record August 19th, 2022, in the matter of the petition for early termination of probation by Lance Michael Mahoney. This matter is being heard by the Board of Chiropractic Examiners, Department of Consumer Affairs, State of California. This is Office of Administrative Hearings Number 2022-070. 530 board case number 29 uh, AC 2019 2016-1064 we do have a quorum of the board present my name is Marcy Larson I'm an administrative law judge with the office of administrative hearings presiding over the matter with the board um, we are uh, as I mentioned here the date time and location of the notice of hearing Ms. Liu, if you would please state your appearance for the record. Yes, good afternoon. This is Mabel Liu, Deputy Attorney General. And Dr. Mahoney, you're representing yourself this afternoon, is that correct? That is correct. And you understood that you could have had an attorney represent you at your own expense? Yes, that is correct. Right, we were uh, supposed to have a court reporter transcribing this hearing. We did not have one available. The matter is being audio recorded. Do you consent to audio recording? Yes, I do. Okay. All right, uh, Dr. Mahoney, I'm going to just go over briefly how the hearing will proceed this afternoon concerning the petition that you filed. Um, the, uh, the first thing that we will do is uh, Ms. Liu, who represents the people, will give the board a brief overview of the history of discipline of your license and uh, your probation. Um, she will also identify the petition documents, which I will mark as an exhibit. If you have any objection to any of those documents, I will ask you and you can tell me if you do. Um, after she's completed her presentation, I will swear you in. You can provide testimony to the board that you want them to consider con concerning um, rehabilitation that you've undertaken since your license was disciplined and the reasons that you're seeking early termination of your probation. They have the petition package, which they've reviewed, so you don't have to repeat anything that's in there, but if there are things that you want to draw their attention to, this is your opportunity to do so. After you provide your testimony, Ms. Liu may question you. If you have any objection to any questions she asks of you, just please tell me, uh, and I'll find out why you're objecting, and then I'll decide whether or not you are required to answer the question. After Ms. Liu is done questioning you, I will ask each of the board members if they have any questions for you as well. I then allow you to add anything else to your testimony. And then if you would like to give any closing remarks to the board, you can do so. Um, during this proceeding, I cannot give any legal advice, but if you have any questions about the procedures, please ask me. And if I can answer the question, I will. Um, after the matter is submitted for the board's consideration, you will not get a decision today. The board will go into closed session and deliberate. You will receive a written decision sometime in the future. All right, any questions for me? No. All right, then Ms. Liu, if you would please begin. Thank you. With regard to the petitioner's license information, on or about April 11, 2012, the board issued Doctor of Chiropractic License Number DC32281 to the petitioner. The license will expire on July 31, 2023, unless renewed. This license is currently on probation with an estimated completion date of March 12, 2023, pursuant to the terms and conditions of probation identified in the decision and orders in case numbers SI2011-874 and AC2016-1064. The discipline against the petitioner's license is effective October 30th, 2011. The board issued a decision and order in case number SI 2011-874 based upon a stipulated settlement and disciplinary order whereby the petitioner admitted the truth of each allegation in the statement of issues and agreed to be 
issued a license which the board would immediately revoke, the revocation would be stayed, and the board would place the, the license on probation for two years, including a provision which stated that upon petitioners successfully taking and passing the California Law and Professional Practice Examination, a chiropractic license will be issued to the petitioner and revoked revocation will be stayed and petitioner will be placed on probation for two years with specific terms and conditions. On April 11, 2012, the petitioner was subsequently issued a license number DC32281 and his two year probationary period began on that date. The disciplinary action was based on the following charges and allegations in the statement of issues filed against the petitioner on May 25th, 2011. The first cause for denial of the application was due to out-of-state discipline with the Iowa Board of Chiropractic Examiners. In that case, the, excuse me, the petitioner obtained a chiropractic license in Iowa in 2002. In 2006, the license was suspended indefinitely due to his inability to practice safely due to a mental condition, a bipolar disorder. Respondent had been hospitalized for this condition and stated that he had chosen not to take his prescription medication. In 2009, his Iowa license was reinstated and placed on two years of probation that required psychiatric counseling and biological testing to ensure he was taking his prescription medication. Second cause for denial of the application was denial of a license by another state, that is the state of Washington. In 2007, Washington State denied the respondent's application for a chiropractic license. The denial was based on his bipolar condition, the fact that he had been hospitalized in 2003 and 2005 due to his illness, and the fact that the 2005 hospitalization had become court ordered, but respondent absconded from the hospital in violation of a court order. The third cause for denial of the application was unprofessional conduct, possession of controlled substance, and drug paraphernalia in September 2003. Based upon a 2003 conviction in North Dakota for possession of drug paraphernalia, he had been found in possession of a glass pipe and marijuana. The fourth cause for denial of the application was unprofessional conduct, disorderly conduct uh, on May 10th, 2010. That conviction was happened in Wisconsin for disorderly conduct, obscene hand gestures. The fifth cause for denial of the application, unprofessional conduct, disorderly conduct in June of 2010. And he uh, suffered a second conviction in 2010 in Wisconsin, again, for disorderly conduct, obscene hand gestures. During this period of probation, an accusation and petition to revoke probation was filed against the petitioner on November 16th, 2015 for endangering the public by practicing outside of a licensed facility, that is, setting up a table near Ocean Beach in San Diego and offering chiropractic services in exchange for donations, and failing to comply with the terms and conditions of probation. Through the decision and order in case number AC2016-1064, the petitioner entered into a stipulated settlement and disciplinary order whereby he admitted the truth of each allegation in the accusation and petition to revoke probation and agreed that his license would be revoked, the revocation stayed, and his license placed on probation for an additional five years of probation, effective March 13, 2018. The current estimated completion date of probation is March 12, 2023. Some of the terms and conditions of probation included participating in psychotherapy with an approved psychotherapist or licensed mental health practitioner, undergoing quarterly blood and or urine testing to confirm petitioner is taking his medications prescribed by his physician for any psychiatric condition and having a practice monitor for 75% of the work week. Previous petitions filed. Effective April 22, 2020, the board granted petition, petitioner's petition for reduction of penalty and modified probation condition 14 by reducing his required monitoring from 75% of the work week to 50% of the work week. All other terms and conditions of probation remain the same. We are here today because the petitioner has filed a petition for early termination of probation. The uh, 
the documents in his petition package are as follows. The petition for early termination of probation dated April 5th, 2022. Certificates of completion. Uh, status of probation by Christine Bell, enforcement analyst who states petitioner is compliant. Uh, the board's decision in case number AC 2016-1064, effective April 22nd, 2020. The board's decision in case number 2016-1064, effective March 13th, 2018. And the board's decision and order in case number 2011-874, effective October 30th, 2011, uh, along with notice of hearing with proof of service. Because the burden is on the petitioner, I have no further statements, but reserve the right to question him later. Right. Thank you. Petition package is marked as Exhibit 1. <clears throat> Dr. Mahoney, do you have any objection to those documents? No. Exhibit 1 is admitted. All right, Dr. Mahoney, do you wish to testify? Yes. All right, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm under penalty of perjury? That the testimony you give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Please state and spell your name. Uh, Lance, L A N C E Mahoney, M A H O N E Y. All right, Dr. Mahoney, just a few reminders concerning your testimony. You're appearing remotely, and so um, it's important to keep your voice up so that I can hear you and the board members can hear you. Uh, speak a little more slowly than you probably do in a normal conversation, and that will help ensure that we can hear you uh, nice and clearly. All right? Okay. You may begin. Um, I'll kind of start from the beginning and try not to make it too long. Um, but thank you for letting myself represent in this case against the board. Um, in 2005, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder when the Iowa board came to me um, asking me to be on probation to keep my license. I um, just because of the disease being new to, new to me, I was unwilling to fulfill their requests. So my license was suspended indefinitely at that time. Um, <clears throat> then a few years later, I decided to go ahead and get get on the probation with the Board of Iowa. I believe that was in 2009. I completed the two years of probation until 2011. Um, and then I relocated to San Diego. Um, the problem happened when I relocated to San Diego, I had to find a new doctor. Um, I had uh, some finances at the time, so I hired a private psychiatrist um, to help me with it, which she uh, prescribed me, there's two forms, I take lithium for my bipolar and there's two forms, there's an extended release and an older one and she prescribed me the wrong one, which I slowly started to develop symptoms um, and then she prescribed me another medication and then I was full blown manic and ended up homeless for a period of time. Um, during the homeless, I was just struggling um, to make money and earn enough money to not sleep on the ground. So I devised the plan of setting up my table and adjusting people for donations, um, which the board eventually found out about me and um, charged me with that. I went from that point, I went on a five year probation with uh, the addition of a monitor. Um, I think I've completed a little bit over four years of that. Um, so one of the reasons I'm requesting you know, a reduction of my probation is just the financial burden of the monitor has been difficult for me. Um, that contributes to my symptoms also because it's an extra financial stress. Um, but like that, uh, like Christina Bell stated, I've been 100% compliant with my probation over the last four years and the two years before that and also the two years before that in the state of Iowa. So um, I think I'm currently eight years consecutively been on probation between Iowa and the state of California, which I've been 100% compliant through it. Um, <clears throat> part of my probation um, is just meeting with my psychiatrist and make, I get surprise blood tests also 
to ensure that I'm taking my medication, um, which I've also been 100% compliant. Um, I got a surprise blood test on my wedding day, which was lovely. Um, also meeting with my psychiatrist. Uh, some of the outside things that I do, I do donate my time to like a men's mental health group, which will meet at my house or wherever. A couple of the homeless guys in that group, I will reach out and help, whether let them stay at my house or just help them get on financial services such as EBT or whatever they can get on. And that's just a big obstacle for some of those guys. When I was homeless, um, it definitely created empathy for the homeless community. Um, I also teach jujitsu to adults and children on a regular basis every week. Um, let's see. Um, from time to time, I will adjust homeless people. I do make them fill out the proper paperwork. Um, let's see. That's it. I have a very tiny practice. Actually, my practice is inside a jujitsu studio, so I'm pretty much there all the time or at home. Um, <clears throat> and that's what I've been doing for the last six years. It's just, I live two blocks away from where I work and pretty much stay in Ocean Beach. That's all I have. Hey, Dr. Mahoney, I'm going to ask Ms. Liu to ask you any questions she might have, and then our board, the board members may have questions for you as well. Ms. Liu, any questions for Dr. Mahoney? I do, Your Honor. Can you tell us what the cost of the monitor is at this time? Um, I think I pay $600 every quarter at this point, since it just got reduced, like um, she said earlier. I'm paying a little bit less. All right. And I believe it's 2400 a year. Yeah. And how does the monitor situation work? Is the monitor in the room with you when you, you have patients? Yes. Okay. She is. And and so you you pay that monitor on an hourly basis? Um no, not an hourly. I think we came to an agreement at the beginning of it. So a flat rate? Mm -hmm. Yes. Which is six hundred dollars every quarter. Yes. And um, if if you're uh, removed from probation early, um, will you continue your therapy and taking your prescription medications? Yes, and, I will. And um, what other assurances can you give the board that the public will remain protected if uh, probation gets terminated early? Um, that's a great question. I don't know. Um, so the board wouldn't be monitoring my care anymore. So I don't know that answer to that question. I guess you'd have to um, just have faith that I would keep up with my care. And which, which I have one thing I was very reluctant in the beginning to, of course, take pills because I'm a chiropractor. Um, but um, a psychiatrist told me that being on probation will help you get used to the routine of taking care of yourself. And it definitely has. And what sort of uh, support system do you have in place? Um, for mental health stuff, I do meet with a men's mental health group on a regular basis. A couple of those people will hold me accountable or I can call them, you know, at any time. It's probably like an AA group. Um, but yeah, otherwise just meeting with my doctor. And how often do you meet with your doctor? Uh, quarterly. Thank you. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right, we're going to ask the um, board members if they have any questions, starting with Dr. Paris. Good afternoon, Dr. Mahoney. Thank you for uh, coming to us today. I, I have a question regarding um, how many hours would you estimate a week? How many hours are you actually in practice? Um, since COVID, not that many. Um, I have scheduled hours on Fridays, and that's when the monitor comes. Um, but the rest of the week is by appointment only. 
So, you know, some weeks I'll be busier than other weeks. So just it's depending. And some and weeks just I can having be, them. Go ahead. Please go ahead. Go ahead. No, um, like I said, I have a small practice. So some weeks I might see 10 patients, some nights, weeks I might see 20. So just having the monitor there, and is this all day on Friday with you? No, no, day? she's just there for two hours on Fridays. Two One hours on Friday? Yes. And so the, the term reads practice monitoring um, to 50%. Mm -hmm. well, what's your interpretation of that? Well, if I work um, 12 hours a month, um, she'd be present six hours a week or six hours a month. And, and do you, are you stating that you're abiding by that 50% currently? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you. I have no further questions. Dr. Adams, any questions for Dr. Mahoney? I have no questions. Thank you. Right. Ms. Sweet, uh, Mr. Sweet, any questions for Dr. Mahoney? Just a quick question. So just to clarify, is the the sole motivation for the request for termination of probation, is it just to save that 600 per quarter? Yes, that's a big reason of it. I don't really have problems with much other than probation. Um, but yeah, the financial, the extra 600 bucks a quarter. Um, like I said, I don't have a huge practice, so it can be a financial, you know, if I have a bad month or, a, you know, like in COVID, a bad year, it becomes burdensome. Thank you. All right, Ms. Cruz, any questions for Dr. Melanie? No questions. Dr. Uh, Daniels, any questions for Dr. Mahoney? They've been addressed. No questions. Thank you. Ms. Liu, any, any further questions for Dr. Mahoney? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Any closing remarks? Submitted. All right, any closing remarks, Dr. Mahoney? Um, no. All right. Is the matter submitted for the board's consideration? Dr. Mahoney, matter submitted? Yes. All right. Matter submitted and the record is closed. All right. Dr. Mahoney, uh, Ms. Bell, uh, Ms. Lou, you are free to go. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I will turn this uh, hearing back, uh, meeting back over to uh, Dr. Harris. Okay, at this time, uh, I'd like to move us into closed session.